How do you set up your Google Classroom? In this tutorial, Melissa Ake is going to take us through how she sets up her Google Classroom. I hope you enjoy it. I'll catch you in the end. Hi, my name is Melissa Ake. I'm one of the mathematics teachers here at ABA. Uh, I'm going to be sharing with you how I use Google Classroom. So sometimes you're unfortunate, you have to build everything from scratch yourself. So let's talk about that. So first we would go to classes and then we would add, create class. So I'm just going to write 11th grade math sample and section A. But sometimes they'll be very specific about what, they, uh, what administration would like to see here so that it's easier on the students if it's consistently named. So we will just give it a generic name. I can always delete this one. So it's nice to have a little practice file. And I'll just make up a room number. And now I'm creating it. So now it's taking a couple moments to set up a Google Class for me. But this would be a totally blank one where I just start from scratch. Now let's say I realize I don't like 11 mass sample, I don't like that name, I can just go back up to settings and I can just say okay I didn't want sample or maybe I wanted that capitalized and I can make my changes. I don't let my students post so in the stream uh, only teachers can post or comment and then that way I don't have to monitor it so much because I'm the only one posting. But some teachers they like to have a conversation going on so maybe you would like that uh, students can post and comment or maybe they only comment on things. Just depends on how you want to use Google Classroom. I pretty much just use it as me giving information to the students and I like to keep it as clean as possible so that I can find things again when they ask me where it is but also so that they can find it. But it's personal preference which one you want to pick there. And um, a lot of other things you can play with here. That's why I made a little sample one so that if I make any weird changes, it's not affecting a real class. So I would suggest starting with a sample one. Um, I'm not a big fan of the stream. Again, if I make, if I'm going to type something in the stream, I'm going to go ahead and put where I want it to go. So I usually don't go from here. I usually go to classwork. Let me discard that. I usually go to classwork and I start with create. And if it's just a comment, like study hard, uh, I can put it there. And then right now I have no topics because this is a brand new, clean, empty, boring looking thing. So I'm going to create a topic. And I can call this important announcements or whatever you think makes sense for your students. Uh, again, I don't have to post it to everybody. Uh, if I had students in here, I could pick on which students I want to have get this announcement. I don't have to have it just go to this one class. I can have it go to all the other classes if I want it to. And then I would post it. Or I can save it as a draft and come back and write more information later. Or I can schedule it. And I can say, okay, in August, as soon as the kids come back, they're going to see that they're going to be having to study hard. And I can schedule it. And now I don't have to think about it, it's just going to show up. And it tells me it's scheduled. So if I don't like the schedule date, if I realize, ooh, that's too soon, I can go in there and edit and change the date. So I could turn this off or I could change it here and say, oops, I didn't mean August 14th, I meant August 16th. And then I could schedule it. But again, it's grayed out so that I know students can't see it yet. So it's really good. You, get to, you know what students can see, but at the same time, you can still see it so that you know what's there. And then that way, sometimes you decide, maybe I just want to delete it. I don't actually need it to post anymore. They already know they're supposed to study hard. Okay, I can create more topics. Instead of waiting until I'm going to use them, I could go ahead and uh, proactively make all my topics. So I could have my unit one, whatever I want to call it. If I don't know what the name is, I can change it later. And then I could add my unit two. And again, if I don't know the name yet, I can always add it later. I can edit it. And then I decide what the order is going to be. To me, important announcements should be at the very top. And I prefer to have unit one above unit two, but that could depend on your preference. Some people would prefer to have the oldest stuff at the bottom and then the newer stuff showing up here. But that's personal preference. And you just click and drag. Unfortunately, you can't click and drag over here. I really wish you could do that on the left side because when you start having lots of these folders and you have to drag it way down, it can be a little time consuming. So I wish they would add that feature, but so far not yet. So let me go ahead and add another unit. Um, but it doesn't have to be, like this could be graphing calculator directions or whatever you want it to be. Um, you could even have memes or jokes, whatever, whatever topic or folder you'd like to have. But then again, drag it to wherever you think it makes the most sense. And again, on the left-hand side, you can see what it looks like without having to scroll down the page to see all of it. Okay, 
I can also add assignments and quiz assignments and questions. Uh, I've used questions for uh, inquiry questions where every student had to answer the inquiry question for the unit. Uh, sometimes that goes well, sometimes that does not. Uh, let's make that inquiry question. And you have different choices. You've got short answer, you've got multiple choice, and again, that's just personal preference. It doesn't have to have a grade. You can leave it as ungraded. It doesn't have to have a due date, but you can put a due date. And again, I like to put things in a topic. And if none of my topics make sense, I just make a new one. And maybe I'll make this one inquiry questions. And again, the rest of this is personal preference, whether the students can reply to each other or edit answers. I can post it to all the different uh, classes that I teach. I can also specify which students are going to answer the question. Okay, and then I can say ask. And because I didn't put a due date, it's just going to stay there forever. But again, I don't like where this is. I'm going to move it down. I think I like it here. But that's just personal preference. Okay, I can also create, ooh, reuse post. That's one of my favorites. That one comes in handy if uh, I've got access to a bunch of teachers' Google Classrooms. I can go back into their Google Classroom, and let's see, I'll steal from Sin. I like stealing from him. And I can go back and look at everything that's been posted to his grade 11, and if there's something in there that I want to use, and so now I can reuse it, and I don't have to do anything else. Everything's there. I can add more comments if I want to, but now I've stolen his notes, and it's ready to be posted for mine. And again, I can post it for all my different sections. Uh, if I don't like it in Unit 2 functions, I can cross that out and pick something else. And then again, I can schedule it and post it whenever I want. And again, it's in gray. That way I know the students can't see it yet, but that it will go out tomorrow. Um, let's see, what else? People, I think we already talked about this before, but I'll repeat. I'd like to share this with all the other teachers that teach the course. I have lots of people that I work with that help a lot, so I would share it with them. And as soon as you get your student roster, you would add all your students here. But some of the students, they're not very good at replying to the invitation, so you would have to periodically take another glance to see if everybody's accepted. And if they haven't, you'll probably be sending them an email reminding them, and maybe even their parents. Now, one bad thing is the teachers can't, the parents cannot log in and look at the information in Google Classroom unless their child is willing to share their password with them. Unfortunately, a lot of kids don't like to share their password, so what usually ends up happening is the parent has to sit down next to the student while the student opens up Google Classroom. So sometimes parents and students don't love that aspect. I wish they could, I wish the parents could also have direct access. So I don't use the grade book that's built in here. But that's personal choice. Uh, where the parents have access to grades is in Manage Back anyway, so that's where I put things. Okay, I hope you found this useful as a starting point. It does so much more. Once again, a thank you to Melissa. This is a fantastic tutorial. Make sure you stick around to watch part two, where she shows how you can duplicate a Google Classroom setup and how easy it is to get started for next year.